9月10日，由美国 ABC 电台主办的美国总统电视辩论会，在各界惊呼中落幕。这原本是一场双方都抱着不让对方好过的电视辩论会，可是却意外演变成一场贺锦丽制霸川普的戏码。而有趣的是，贺锦丽制霸川普的地方，并不是靠着出色的政策，或者是无懈可击的论述。而是靠着多年在法庭上辩论攻防的技巧训练，成功的激怒了川普。I have traveled the world as vice president of the United States, and world leaders are laughing at Donald Trump. I have talked with military leaders, some of whom worked with you, and they say you're a disgrace. And when you then talk in this way in a presidential debate and deny. What over and over again are court cases you have lost because you did, in fact, lose that election in our campaign for you to stand for country, to stand for our democracy, to stand for rule of law, and to end the chaos, and to end the approach that is about attacking the foundations of our democracy because you don't like the outcome. And be clear. On that point, Donald Trump, the candidate, has said in this election there will be a bloodbath if this and the outcome of this election is not to his liking. Let's turn the page on this. Let's not go back. Is is there one moment tonight so far in the first hour that really stands out that you remember, Jennifer? Not really. I mean, it looks like to me that she's just attacking him, attacking, attacking him, trying to provoke him, and he's doing his best. To not be provoked, and I don't think that the voters are learning anything or really getting much out of this. Again, the moderators ought to be doing a better job. UCLA anthropology professor Norma Mendoza Denton says Harris irked Trump at times. She said world leaders are laughing at Donald Trump. Donald Trump is weak and wrong on national security. Donald Trump was fired by 81 million people. I mean, that's just you know playing on the Apprentice. You're fired. Um, so she's just goading him. Yeah, we're hearing from、uh, the Democrats with whom I've spoken are very happy with how this debate unfolded. There was some focus on policy from the vice president, particularly on economic policy, at both the beginning and the end of the debate. They're happy with how Vice President Harris、uh, comported herself during the course of the debate.、Uh, when you look at Republicans, we spoke with Michael Watley,、uh, who's the head of the Republican、uh, National Committee. He also happy with how this unfolded, saying that、uh, he had a good defense. President Trump, former President Trump, had a good defense、uh, in response to Vice President Kamala Harris's、uh, statements over and over again that the country is ready to look forward,、uh, not back. So, as you can see behind me,、uh, the spin room is is、uh, quite vital. But you bring up that endorsement by Taylor Swift. She's the surrogate, of course. <laughs> I think most people are, are are keen to have heard from tonight, even though she's not in fact、uh, in the room tonight. But、uh, by and large, I think people think that、uh, from both sides, this was a successful、uh, successful debate for both of these candidates. What about your sense of the extent in which it's managed to convince some undecided voters, David? This is such a, a key question here, and you look at the electorate in this country. Most people have their minds made up. We're talking about maybe tens of thousands of voters who have not yet, and that's not to say that these candidates aren't focusing on them.、Uh, but <laughs> it, it, it's it's a, a, an electorate that is now pretty calcified in their views. And so, what we're going to see coming out of this debate are these two candidates going to great efforts to reach those voters in swing states across this country. So, this time, the television debate will be held on weekdays. No matter Trump or Hillary Clinton. 都必须面对立即发酵、排山倒海的舆论点评，对贺锦丽来说并不是件坏事，因为各界本来就不预期她能够有什么惊人之语。但是，以检察官心情与川普对阵的贺锦丽，一上台就展现凌厉的攻势，让川普本来好整以暇的一派长老姿态，到最后都不得不动怒了。但是，平心来看，这场辩论，两个人到底说了什么重点？ I want to begin tonight with the issue that voters repeatedly say is their number one issue, and that is the economy and the cost of living in this country. Vice President Harris, you and President Trump were elected four years ago, and your opponent on the stage here tonight often asks his supporters, "Are you better off than you were four years ago?" When it comes to the economy, do you believe Americans are better off than they were four years ago? I would love to. Let's talk about what Donald Trump left us. Donald Trump left us the worst. Unemployment since the Great Depression. Donald Trump left us the worst public health 
epidemic in a century. Donald Trump left us the worst attack on our democracy since the Civil War. And what we have done is clean up Donald Trump's mess. The tariff will be substantial in some cases. I took in billions and billions of dollars, as you know, from China. In fact, they never took the tariff off because it was so much money they can't. It would totally destroy everything that they've set out to do. They're taking in billions of dollars from China and other places. They've left the tariffs on. When I had it, I had tariffs, and yet I had no inflation. Look at the economy. Look, how, look at the inflation. They didn't fire any of their economists. They have the same people. That the Trump administration resulted in a trade deficit, one of the highest we've ever seen in the history of America. He invited trade wars. You want to talk about his deal with China. What he ended up doing is under Donald Trump's presidency, he ended up selling American chips to China to help them improve and modernize their military, basically sold us out when a policy about China should be in making sure the United States of America wins the competition for the 21st century. First of all, they bought their chips from Taiwan. We hardly make chips anymore. I have traveled the world as Vice President of the United States, and world leaders are laughing at Donald Trump. I have talked with military leaders, some of whom worked with you, and they say you're a disgrace. Let me just tell you about world leaders. Viktor Orban, one of the most respected men, they call him a strong man, he's a, he's a tough person, smart, prime minister of Hungary. They said, why is the whole world blowing up? Three years ago it wasn't. Why is it blowing up? He said, because you need Trump back as president. Let me get your takeaways just so far in this first hour. Jennifer. Well, I don't think that either one of them are changing anything. They haven't really given any policy stances. Every time um, Vice President Harris has been asked for a policy stance, she talks in broad strokes and she hasn't really told us how she would do the things that she would like to see done. Strangely, I kind of agree with Jennifer in, in terms of the in-depthness of, of the policy, but I think what we're seeing for here, both. both of them really, um, I think I understand a little bit more about Vice President's um, policy initiatives because I've been actually reading and listening to what she's been saying so a lot of it is not surprised. I think she's tried to get to that policy point. It seems to me um, ex-president Trump is just basically talking to his base not really expanding um, and I think that's where we're gonna be at in terms of this election. Who can awaken more people and get them to vote. Well, the candidates clashed on stage in tonight's anticipated debate. Social media platforms lit up with a torrent of reactions. Yeah, we took to social media to get your thoughts on the debate. And here's what some of you said on social media pages. Christopher Cervantes writing on our X account, quote, these moderators are a disgraceful failure and this is one of the most bi biased, unfair debates I have ever seen, end quote. And uh, Jacob Matthews also writing on Twitter, quote, they're both bad, end quote. Now another frustrated viewer writes, quote, America was once the greatest country in the world. Now we are whatever with this, end quote. Well, his debate opponent, I will say one thing for her, she had a pulse unlike his opponent a few months ago. So I there was that big difference. But look, I think what we revealed here is that Kamala Harris is a candidate of platitudes. There's no substance. There's no ability for her to talk about how her record lowered grocery prices or housing prices because her policy raised housing prices and raised grocery prices for Americans. So I think what we saw was Donald Trump. He was crisp. He was clear. He had a real vision for what to do to take this country forward. He also has a record that he's proud of. Chen 如果说此刻的川普不担心选情,那绝对是骗人的。
美国总统大选举行的同时，也正是美国众议院全数435个席位及参议院33个议席要同步进行改选之际。正因为牵涉政治版图的挪移，所以当初拜登在第一次电视辩论会上表现失常，民主党为顾及国会议员选情，才会逼着拜登离开战场，换贺锦丽上场救援。回顾初心，民主党当时的盘算是什么？外界无从预测，但是随着贺锦丽的人气不坠，这次民主党有没有机会取得全面执政优势，其实才是美国政坛关心的焦点。因为近期欧洲盟友在面对跛脚政治，使得政策挚爱难行、社会动荡的窘境才也应见不远。